Hi there, and welcome to the next lesson for your free online Microsoft 7412 training course. In this third lesson, I will demonstrate how to create an NLB cluster on Windows Server 2012 R2. If this is the first lesson you have watched from this training series, then I strongly recommend that you first go back and review lessons 1 and 2 before watching this video, as these contain useful theory and prerequisites. The aim of this lesson is to show you how to create an NLB cluster on Windows Server 2012 R2 using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. Before we get started, let's just recap, in brief, what we have learned so far. A Network Load Balancing Cluster, or NLB cluster as they are sometimes known, is essentially a group of servers, two or more, which have been joined together to provide a particular service to clients. Network traffic which is sent to the NLB cluster is distributed amongst the servers that make up the cluster. This is called load balancing. NLB clusters are best suited for load balancing applications where data does not change too often. This is typical of web-based services, such as web servers, FTP servers and VPN servers. Understand that the servers which make up the NLB cluster cannot exchange information with one another. This is why NLB clusters are not suitable for applications where clients can make changes to the data, such as on database servers, messaging servers and file servers. With Windows Server 2012 R2, you can have up to 32 individual servers participating in a single NLB cluster, and each of the participating servers is referred to as a host or a node. Before a Windows Server 2012 R2 server can participate in an NLB cluster, you must first install the network load balancing feature onto that server. This was demonstrated in our last lesson. NLB clusters can be created using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. When you create an NLB cluster, each of the hosts or nodes participating in the cluster must have at least one network interface card with a static IP address. The static IP addresses assigned to these hosts must be on the same subnet. Although only one network adapter is required by each host, where possible, Microsoft recommends that each host have two network adapters. With this strategy, one of the network adapters in the host is configured to respond to just NLB traffic. That is, when NLB traffic is distributed amongst the hosts in the cluster, it is sent to the network adapter which has been dedicated for this traffic. Meanwhile, the second network adapter will be configured with its own separate IP address and will handle all of the host's regular network traffic, which is not related to the NLB cluster. Although two network adapters for each host is strongly encouraged by Microsoft, it is not an essential requirement. If the host only has one network adapter, this adapter will handle both the NLB traffic as well as other network traffic. Regardless of whether the host has one or two network adapters, the adapter used for NLB traffic must have a static IP address. It cannot use a DHCP IP address. When you create the NLB cluster, you will be asked to select the network adapter from the host that you want to use for clustered traffic and then assign it a static IP address. Once complete, you will then be required to assign another static IP address, this time to the NLB cluster as a whole. Any network traffic destined for the NLB cluster will be sent to the cluster IP address and will then be load balanced among the hosts in the cluster. The cluster IP address must also be on the same subnet as the host IP addresses. 
The final step to creating an NLB cluster is to configure port rules. Port rules, in a nutshell, determine which types of network traffic are to be load balanced by the cluster and how it is to be load balanced. Because port rules are so critical to the configuration of an NLB cluster, these will be looked at in more detail in our next lesson. Without further ado, I will now demonstrate how to create an NLB cluster on my Windows Server 2012 R2 server. If you recall from the last lesson, we have already installed the network load balancing feature onto this server. To create the NLB cluster, first open Server Manager from the lower left corner and select Tools from the top right corner. From the drop down list, select Network Load Balancing Manager. Alternatively, you can also launch the Network Load Balancing Manager from the command prompt using the NLB MGR command. Both of these methods will launch the Network Load Balancing Manager tool. From the top left corner, I will select the Cluster option and select New from the drop down list. This will open the New Cluster Wizard. The first page of the New Cluster Wizard is the Connect page. In the Host field at the top, enter the name of the first node you want to add to the NLB cluster and then click the Connect button. Notice at the bottom of the page, the wizard will detect all of the network adapters installed in this host. As you can see, this server has two network adapters installed, named Ethernet and Ethernet2. From here, you need to select which network adapter will be used for NLB traffic. In this example, I will select the Ethernet network adapter. Once you have selected the adapter you want to use for the cluster, click the Next button. On the next screen, you will be asked to specify the host parameters. All of the settings on this screen are unique to this particular node and not the NLB cluster as a whole. The first setting you need to configure is the Priority Unique Host Identifier setting. Each host in the NLB cluster must be given a unique ID to identify it. As you can see, these unique IDs range from 1 to 32. Recall from earlier, you can have up to 32 hosts in a single NLB cluster. Each host must be assigned a unique ID number. Be very careful that you do not assign the same unique ID to multiple hosts. If you were to assign the same unique ID to a second host, that host will not be added to the cluster. As well as uniquely identifying each host, this setting also determines which of the hosts will handle network traffic for the cluster which is not covered by a port rule. The host with a value of 1 is considered to have the highest priority, whereas a host with a value of 32 is considered to have the lowest priority. When network traffic which is not covered by a port rule is sent to an NLB cluster, this traffic will be passed to the host with the highest priority. It is therefore considered a best practice to give the most powerful host in the cluster a priority of 1, and the least powerful host a priority of 32. For now, as this is the only host in the NLB cluster, I will assign it a priority setting of 1. The next setting on this screen is the dedicated IP address setting. Each node in the NLB cluster must have its own static IP address. What you see here is the static IP address that is currently assigned to my Ethernet network adapter. If you wanted to change the static IP address, you can do this by clicking the Edit button. This will allow you to modify the IP address and subnet mask for the network adapter. Also note that you can remove the IP address from the network adapter by clicking the Remove button. Furthermore, if the network adapter does not have a static IP address defined, you can configure one 
by clicking the Add button. You can use both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses for an NLB cluster. For now, I will stick with the more commonly used IPv4 addresses. The last setting on this screen is the initial host state setting. This setting determines how and when this host should rejoin the cluster after it has been rebooted. The network load balancing feature is loaded very early in the operating system boot sequence. When this happens, the NLB feature will start up and the host will immediately rejoin the cluster. The problem occurs when the NLB feature starts before the clustered application itself has had a chance to start. If this happens, NLB traffic can be directed to the host before the clustered application is able to respond to it. This can cause some disruption to clients connecting to the cluster. It is best to select the Started option if you are confident that the clustered application starts at more or less the same time as the NLB feature. If this is not the case, you could select Stopped. This will prevent the host from rejoining the cluster automatically, but gives the clustered application plenty of time to load. The only drawback to this method is that it requires a network administrator to manually rejoin the host to the cluster. Finally, the suspended state is generally used when you perform maintenance on the host. When the suspended state is chosen, the host will not rejoin the cluster nor respond to any remote NLB cluster commands when the host is rebooted. This remains the case until the state is changed. For now, I will leave this on the default started state. On the next screen, you will set the cluster IP address. This IP address is used to identify the NLB cluster as a whole. Keep in mind that the IP address you enter here for the cluster must be on the same subnet as the static IP address you assigned to the host on the previous screen. To configure an IP address for the NLB cluster, click the Add button and enter either an IPv4 or IPv6 address. When finished, click the OK button. As with the previous screen, you can edit or remove the IP address using the Edit and Remove buttons. When you have finished, click the Next button. On the next screen, you will be asked to provide the cluster parameters. From here, you need to enter a full internet name for the NLB cluster. This is essentially the DNS host name, which will resolve to the cluster's IP address. The final screen is the Port Rules screen. From here, you are required to create the port rules for your cluster. Port rules determine which types of network traffic are to be load balanced by the cluster. By default, when an NLB cluster is first created, there will be one port rule which is automatically created for you. This port rule permits all TCP IP network traffic sent on ports 0, to port 65535. In the next lesson, we will look at port rules in a lot more detail, including how to create your own custom port rules. To keep things simple for now, I will accept the default port rule by clicking the Finish button. The NLB cluster has now been created. Of course, at the moment, there is only one host which is handling all network traffic for the cluster. In a later lesson, I will demonstrate how to add a second host to the cluster. Right now though, for the 7412 exam, it is important that you learn how to create an NLB cluster on a Windows Server 2012 R2 server running in server core mode. I will now demonstrate how to create an NLB cluster on another server running in server core mode. First, I will enter the PowerShell tool by simply entering PowerShell on the command prompt. 
notice that the prompt is now prefixed with the letters PS to indicate we are now in fact in PowerShell. From here, I will first run the command new NLB cluster. This will instruct Windows to create a brand new NLB cluster. Next, I need to specify the name of the host computer I want to make a member of the cluster. To do this, I will add the switch host name, followed by the name of this host, which is server 2. The next step is to select a network adapter from server 2 to use for NLB traffic. To do this, I will add the switch interface name, followed by the name of the network adapter, which for this host is Ethernet. If you recall, the network adapter used for the NLB traffic must be assigned a static IP address. Assuming this network adapter has not already been assigned a static IP address, you can do this using the following switches. Dedicated IP will assign the host a static IP address, and the dedicated IP subnet mask switch will assign the subnet mask. Next, we need to assign an IP address to the NLB cluster itself. To do this, add the switch cluster primary IP, followed by the static IP you want for the cluster, and the subnet mask switch to assign a subnet mask. Lastly, we need to give the cluster a DNS name to resolve to the cluster IP address. To do this, add the switch cluster name followed by the name you want to assign to the cluster. After a short while, the new NLB cluster will be created. This concludes how to create a new NLB cluster in Windows Server 2012 R2 using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. In the next lesson, I will discuss port rules in more detail. In order for your NLB cluster to work correctly, it is critical that your port rules are set up correctly. This is why we are dedicating an entire lesson on how to set up port rules using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, feel free to browse our YouTube channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.